Hi, this is Surf Insight, and my name's Tim, and we're going to talk about uh, first aid kits for surfers, which is kind of, we thought, well, we'll do one about traveling and what you can have when you're traveling, which part of this includes, but also just a basic first aid kit that you will have in your car, you take down the beach in your backpack. And the big thing about it is that we could help other people. It's not just about ourselves. Now, the kit that we've got comes out at about this size. Now, if you're traveling, um, that's not the biggest thing to have in your luggage, especially if you're on a, a long, long trip, and especially if you're going to isolated places too, where they may not be able to sell good quality medical equipment. So use a sealed box. This box, no water can get in it, and that's gonna be important. I would write first aid on it. Now, it seems weird, but imagine you're injured, you wanna send somebody to your bag or car, and you say, look for the box, it's got first aid written on it. So that kind of makes sense. So let's have a look what's in there. The first thing before anything else is to keep yourself safe. So rubber gloves. If it's your friend helping you, it's a close friend, rubber gloves. If it's you, you don't know what you've touched before you start treating yourself, especially with an open wound, we're talking about cuts and stuff, gloves. And they're very quick, you just open them up. Do not forget to dispose of them, especially when you've got blood in a bin. Don't let anybody else go touching them or putting them in the bin. Seal them in a bag, get rid of them. It makes sense, especially these days. So rubber gloves is number one. Now the next thing we're gonna look at are these guys, and these are essential. These are basically a gauze, we call it, which is used as a dressing for a wound or to clean the wound. And when you clean the wound, any wound with gauze, just make a little kind of bunch like that. Don't clean them with it flat. People do that and that isn't efficient. Just clean them with a gauze, bunch it up like that and that gets into the wound a lot, lot better. And what do you clean it with? Now, a lot of people will say, oh, well, Betadine or uh, Aqua Oxygena or no. The first thing you clean, and this is a real good friend for you, in a first aid kit, water. Just water. When you first have a wound, that's what you use. Why? Now, Betadine is great, and I keep Betadine in here. We're going to use it when we finally dress the wound. But what all these kind of chemicals will do is they stop the wound from naturally trying to coagulate, seal. They're great for cleaning, but they don't help coagulation. So you clean first with that, and then later on, you could use this, well, you would use this to clean your wound before dressing. So these guys are vital for cleaning, but obviously they become vital to go on to any cuts first. You cleaned, then you put these guys on, yeah? now. First aid's developed so much uh, over the last few years. Carry a few packets of these too. Over the last few years, we've developed these kind of tapes. Now, I'm not gonna unwrap this now, there's no point, but it's 3M, it's a good mark, but a lot of companies sell these, and it's just a sticky tape. So one side can go on, and you peel the paper off, and it sticks really fast. What you want is speed, really fast and quick. Now, you may well be cutting your tape, scissors. Just a, don't have pointed ones. You make a mistake, bung yourself in the arm or the leg or the head of somebody else. Soft-ended scissors, which will help you cut the tape or the gauze you're using. Then, I love these things. If you can travel with these, would be fantastic. Now I'm gonna kinda waste one here. I'm gonna waste a little small one. This is amazing. What you do, and you can get these in many, many countries. What you do, take it out. It's got a gauze already on it. So this one is an eye dressing. So you imagine, bang, it's on the eye, and that opens up, and super fast. Now, tell, uh, you go to the third world, these are really hard to find. You know, uh, there will be many, many pharmacies and they just won't have these. So if you're somewhere where you can buy them to travel with, you only need a few, you know, we're not going to war, but uh, they're fantastic and they're super, super fast to use. Okay, 
people use plasters, you know. Now, really, your gauze and your bandaging should be your first line. But maybe you're going to go surfing after your, uh, you've dressed your wound. And now on the market are lots of these incredible waterproof plasters very useful when you're surfing peel them off stick them on and literally the water doesn't get in there you know nothing is ever going to replace good medical advice if it's serious one going to the hospital you know you'll know if you need stitches you'll see people advising that you can travel and some people do with the staples which actually staple but that's pretty sort of backcountry first aid and you should know what you're doing uh, but Small cuts, abrasions, you want to keep surfing, waterproof plasters are a great thing to carry with you. You might have, here's our Betadine, which we use probably before putting one of these guys on. Uh, we got home, we want to dress the wound again. Dress the wound again. This is not a first aid course, it's just telling you what to bring. Okay, these guys, I've sprained my ankle like an elasticated bandage. I've sprained my ankle, I want to support it. Carrying one of these with you can really, really help. And you've got these guys, which are slightly different. This is a support bandage. Now, people with bad ankles, wrists, stuff, this, it's quite expensive, super sticky, but it will really, really help. A lot stronger than these. So I always carry those guys. And lastly, a little thing here, tweezers. Well, what do we want? We know what we want these for, urchins. There are so many stories how you get rid of urchins. Uh, personally, I'm a big fan of using a little scalpel, slicing the wound, picking it out. Some people use a cream which raises it. There are many, many stories. By the way, urinating on anything no, we don't you do that, all right? Just use water to clean things with. But I always carry, and the other thing to have in your kit are these little guys here called Steri Strips. Now, if we've got a wound that we think might need stitches, you might need to close it up really quickly. Direct pressure really works, but you can also use these things, little Steri Strips. I, mean, I do know people who've used these on minor cuts left them on there a couple of days and they've never had to go and get stitches. They're not a replacement for stitches, but these things are vital. Little strips, you peel them off, use them across a slice and a wound that you want to seal. Now that's a pretty basic first aid kit. What we don't have here, obviously in this little kit, was ice. But ice is really important. Get ice on early on. You watch the player in the football or the rugby or the hockey game, immediately the physio is putting ice on there. So you've got these kind of packs now which you can crack, which actually generates freezing cold kind of plastic you can put on a wound. Uh, but if you're near a cafe or whatever, and actually a packet of frozen peas works really well because the peas kind of can mold to where the, uh, the damage is. So ice, ice, ice. Remember, rice. Rice is rest, ice, compression, elevation. Um, that's not going to be a lot to carry on to a plane or have in your car, but it would deal with a lot of things. What seems really strange in our first aid kit is this, which is like an old bank card, credit card, whatever, you know? And what we use it for is when we get stung by jellyfish. Now you can use sand to rub over it because jellyfish stings are little hooks and the sand works, but these kind of cards, they pull out the stings really well. Now again, that idea of urinating, forget about it. Have a look where you travel at how you treat any jellyfish strings because they depend on the type of jellyfish. Sometimes it's cold, sometimes it's hot water, cold water, ice, could be vinegar. Vinegar often works for a lot of jellyfish, but these guys immediately start taking the stings away before that treatment, better than sand. I've got some extras here, which you might want on a surf trip. Uh, particularly, people get sand in their eyes. So eye wash, but that's quite a big bottle, and it's got a cap there. But what's really good is you take your eye wash, and you put it in a squeezy bottle. And then, psh, great way to clean your eyes is to just squeeze the thing in there. Do not rub your eyes with sand. Keep it open, psh, 
and clean it. So eye wash is a good thing to, to carry. Some people carry a little bit of hydrogen pyro peroxide. You know, when we see coral cuts and you see them putting on the line, it does work. It does work, but any major coral cut, you should have proper dressing and get to a hospital, get to a doctor. People get strains and pulls when they're uh, surfing, so I always carry and make sure I've got some ibuprofen, some anti-inflammatories. Uh, I'm a big fan of Voltaren. But you've got to be careful with these things because you may find that they irritate your stomach, but they're not the worst things to take when you've got a, a small minor muscle pull, a couple of days, and you feel better. Eardrops, not a bad thing to take with you. You don't know what you could get, especially in the tropics. So that in your bag, you start feeling a little tingly, kind of itchy ear, some e -drop, ear drops. Now I'm not saying put this stuff in your first aid kit. This is not first aid. This is just to treat things that might come along. You got this thing here. This is just a uh, heating, you know, your shoulders or your knee is sore from a surfing injury or pull. This kind of cream's really, really useful. And we know when we travel, we often get rub from uh, wetsuits or our rash vest or our ribs are killing us. Just basic Vaseline. Keep Vaseline away from all wounds. And we also know what happens, we get sick. You know, we want to surf again. Stuff like Imodium, you know, that stops diarrhea, but you've got to hydrate. So this kind of stuff, it goes in a litre of water to get all the vital salts and minerals back down you. So those are the extras. Also, I always carry in my car one, a bit of tape. Now it's strange, I use basic tape. I've got a wound and uh, I feel I want to protect that wound. Often I just put a bit of tape around it as well. That works. Now, lastly, this. Now, this is pretty weird, but we're going to show you now how this can be an incredible help down the beach. Uh, at worst, we can use it uh, for major lacerations as a tourniquet, only of the lower limbs, yeah, not the upper limbs, uh, but as a sling. And we'll show you now in the clip of video how it can be used as sling for dislocations or breaks in the leg. I've been using it now about six, seven years, teaching other people. We've all got leashes. There's many surfboards on the beach. Fantastic. You see, we can use the leashes to immobilize a limb. Uh, could be dislocated shoulder, um, a broken arm, at worst uh, as a tourniquet for a lower limb, um, immobilizing a broken leg. And we'll do a video in the future in detail about this system, putting somebody on the surfboard as a stretcher. So that's about it guys. That's your basic first aid kit. As you could see, there wasn't much in there. And um, travel safely. Travel safely, keep surfing. You know, don't find yourself somewhere going, oh God, I've got to go to the chemists. I've got to get this, I've got to get that. Have the basics with you. And one thing we would say to all surfers, not just to be, as we said, uh, helping yourself, but others, do a first aid course and learn CPR. A, B, C, you know, and what's the order of things? And then after that, bleeding before bones, all that stuff. It would be so good if everybody had good, solid first aid knowledge. I hope that video helped. Please subscribe to this channel and uh, hit that water running and uh, not limping or the cuts or whatever, please. And uh, thanks a lot for watching.